Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about the concept of heteroscedasticity. And the reason why we have to worry about this is because when we're building our regression models, we have several assumptions that we have in linear regression. And one of them is that there's constant error variance. What do I mean by that? So when we're creating our model, if we create a linear regression here, a linear equation that goes through this, these observations here, and don't worry about how I created this, I'm just trying to show an example, we see that there's constant error variance across independent variables. On the other hand, heteroscedasticity shows that there's non-constant variance. So for example, if you created an equation line through here, we notice that we have smaller error variance here, but as time goes by, as, as we move through the independent variables, we get larger error variance. And the problem with this is that our F tests will be unreliable. Our T tests of each of the individual coefficients, they will also be unreliable. And that's because the standard errors will be biased. And so for example, these standard errors here, if we go to our results, these standard errors will be underestimated. And therefore the T statistics will be inflated if there's heteroscedasticity. If we do have heteroscedasticity, we may find significant relationships where none exist. We don't want that. So we need to test for that and then correct it. So what we're going to do in this video is test for heteroscedasticity and of our model that we built earlier on, on ARC returns over the Russell growth and Russell value indexes. And then we're going to try to correct for it if there is an issue. So now we have that understanding. A great way to test for this is something called the broch pagan test. And essentially what the broch pagan test is doing is that it takes the residuals, the squared residuals, of our model, and it regresses it on the independent variables. What do I mean by that? Well, essentially what we're doing is we're taking the residuals, that is the residuals were, that was the error from our original model, we're squaring it, and then we create a new regression model on top of the in independent variables. And if no conditional heteroscedasticity exists, the R squared will be very low. If conditional heteroscedasticity does exist, the high, there will be a high R squared. And so our null hypothesis is that there's no conditional heteroscedasticity, and we do not want to reject that null. So I'll explain more in a second. So let's actually take a look at our X variables. So remember, we have these X variables. But we also have these residuals. So we can look at our results.resid. So these are the residuals. So this is the difference between what our equation predicted and the actual value. That's the residuals. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take these residuals, square it, and regress it on our independent variables here, RLG and RLB. And if there is a relationship there, if they're correlated, that is called conditional heteroscedasticity. So let's just take that. Let's just take our residuals, and we're going to call this residuals. Let's make it easy. And then we're going to square this. So I'm going to square this like so. So we have our residuals. And now what we would like to do is we're going to create a new model. We're going to say SM for SATS model dot OLS. We're going to take our residuals. And then we're going to regress it on our independent variables, X. And we're going to just say this is equal to model 2. Run that, and then we, again we need to fit our model dot fit, and we're going to say this is equal to results two, and we're just going to say results two dot summary. And there we go. And so you'll notice again, if no conditional heteroscedasticity exists, we will have a low R squared. Let's take a look at R squared. Is it low? It looks like somewhat pretty low. So we can say that it's not, there doesn't seem to be any heteroscedasticity in our original model. But we need to test for this. So Broch and Pagan show that under a null hypothesis of no conditional heteroscedasticity, this is equal to n, n times R squared. And that's from the regression of the squared residuals on the independent variables from the original regression. This will be a chi-squared random variable with the number of degrees of freedom equal to the number of independent variables in the regression. Therefore, we can look at a chi-squared table and find our 
critical value, and it will be a one tail test, and then compare this value, n times r squared, to that critical value. So let's take a look again at our regression of the re squared residuals on the independent variables. We see we have an r squared of 0 0.132, the number of observations 36. So we can just take 36 times 0. Point, what was it? 0 0.132, 0 0.132. That's 4.75. And now we can look at we can just look at a chi squared table. And if we want to have a 0 0.05 significance level or 95% confidence level, and given that we had two independent variables, our degrees of freedom will be two. So we can scroll, remove down here to 0 0.05. Our critical value is 5.991. We can just go, say, 5.991. So is our test statistic from this regression n times r squared, 36 times 0 0.132, is that larger or smaller than our critical value? It's smaller. So we cannot reject the null that there is no conditional heteroscedasticity. So this is good. And so, of course, there's always an easier way to do this in Python. We can, of course, instead of regressing these residuals, squared residuals on independent variables and looking just at the R squared and testing this, we could just use a package of the broch pagan package in stats model. So we can just say from stats models dot stats dot diagnostic import HET Broche Dagan run that and then from here we can just say BP test Broche Pagan test equals and I'm just gonna copy this so I don't misspell it Broche Pagan and we can just take our results, and we can put in our residuals, again, remember. And we can also just take the results dot model dot exogenous. And remember, these are the results from our original model, not results too. So this is from our original model dot exogenous. And those are just our independent x variables. And we can just output this, BP test on that. There we go. We can just move all the way down to the right here. This is the p-value. And since it's less than or greater than 0 0.05, we cannot reject the null of no conditional heteroscedasticity. So that's good. It confirms our what we found earlier. So we can have more confidence in our original model here that our t-statistics are not biased and our coefficients are not biased and consistent. So if you like this video, please subscribe. Till next time.